tutorial. Hi, my name is Mika from Beats and Basics and thank you for watching this jewelry tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a net around a stone. And this net is very special because you can open it and replace it with another stone. And I'm also going to show you how to create half a net around a rectangle shaped stone. All materials can be bought on our website www.beatsandbasics.com and the technique I'm using is very simple, so let's get started. Here are the used materials. You'll need a pair of scissors, Eslon thread, a stone and jewelry glue. If you want to exchange the stones, make sure that the stones are about the same size, like these two. In this video I will also show you how to create this half net. And for this you will need a stone that's shaped in a rectangle shape. I started by cutting four strands and those are the same length. And for this tutorial, I'm only going to show you how to create the net around a stone. But if you make a necklace, your threads will be longer than mine. And to make a whole necklace, I would recommend to make each strand about 2 meters long. And we're going to start by folding the first strand in half. And making the ends meet. And then on the other side, you will see that you created a loop. And this will be our starting point. And now you're going to measure around your stone how big the loop should be. And for me, this will be the bottom of the stone and this will be the top. So I'm going to measure at the bottom. I want the loop to be small enough so the stone won't be able to escape. But I want it to be wide enough so that the stone will sit nicely. So I think this will be the right size for my stone. I'm going to put my thumb right where I want to make a knot. And I'm going to fold it around my finger. And then go through the loop with both ends. Now I'm going to make sure to pull tight at exactly where my thumb is. And I'm gonna pull each strand to make it extra secure. And then my first loop is done. And as you can see, it will fit nicely with the stone. Then next, we're gonna grab a new strand. The first part will be the same. You're gonna make sure that the ends will meet. Then you create a loop on the other side. But this time you're not gonna make a knot yet. Instead, you're going underneath the loop that we just made you're going to pull you're going to pull the loop a little bit wider so that your fingers will fit through like this and then you're going to pull the ends of the second thread through this loop like that and as you can see you'll create this shape and when you pull tight there will be a knot like this and i made a knot exactly across from the first knot then to attach the third strand we're going to do the same you're going to fold it in half make the ends meet create a loop like this and now you're going to choose to make it either on the top or at the bottom and we're going to go with the loop underneath the first loop you make it wide enough so your fingers will fit through and you're going to pull the two strands through and you pull tight now you're going to make sure that the other two knots are at the same height when you pull so all the spaces in between will be even. And lastly, the last strand will be attached to this loop the same way as we did before. So you will make a square of knots. As you can see, I made a square and now we can start knotting again. Then you can see that you have two strands at each corner. On the left side, I'm gonna use the right strand and on the right side, I'm gonna use the left strand. And we're gonna make a knot and we're gonna do that by pulling the two strands together, as you can see here. And I'm gonna decide how far away from the first loop I want it to be. And I think about this side will be good. So the first row of knots, you don't have to measure around your stone because it's not that important yet. The only thing that's important is that the two strands that you use are even, so like this. And you're just gonna make a normal knot like we did before. So you're gonna twist it around your finger and then go through with the strand. And then you're gonna pull tight and make the knot. And then your first knot is done. Now you can move on to the next one. And for this one, I'm gonna use this strand and the left strand on the right side. And we're gonna do exactly the same. You're gonna pull the two strands together. And this time you wanna make sure that the knot that you're gonna make is at the same height as the first knot that we just made. So I think this will be the right size. And then we're gonna make a knot. So around your fingers and go through the loop like so. 
and then your second knot is done as well. Now we're gonna move on to the next one in line and you're gonna continue like this until you made four knots again. When you're done with the make when you're done making four knots, you can fit your stone to see if you're on the right track. So you're just gonna place the bottom at the bottom of the stone and you can pull tight at each strand to the top. And from this part on, you're just gonna knot the same way as we did before. So you're gonna use a right strand on the left side and a left strand from the right side and make another knot. This time you will have to measure around the stone to see if it still fits. You don't have to pull it too tight because we're gonna make a net that will be suited for multiple stones. And once you're at the top of the stone, I'll show you how to make a sliding knot so we can remove the stone and put another stone in. As you can see, I finished uh, creating the net and the stone would be fully covered with the net right now. And we're gonna make a sliding knot so we could exchange the stones if we want. And we're gonna do that as following. I already separated the two strands at the top into one group and the two strands at the bottom to one group. And I made a loose knot at the end of both of the groups just to make sure that I can see which group is which. Um, and then we can start by making the sliding knot. And we're gonna do that as following. You're gonna place the bottom strands along your finger like this. And with the top group, you go over your finger and the strand, like so. And we're gonna repeat this two more times. So one and two. Now what you're gonna do is with the top group, you go back to the front of the loops and now I'm gonna make some room by sliding my finger out like this and I go back through the front and I put the strand through the loops like this and we want the knot to be as close to the top of the net as possible so what we're gonna do is we're gonna push the top group inwards and then you start pulling tight like this and just making sure that it's right above the net it will close then you can pull tight and as you can see I created a knot so and once you pull at the group that we made the knot around you can see that it will open and you can put your stone in if you want And then you look at the shortest one and once you pull at this shortest one, the knot will close. And you can see that this stone will fit as well. As I explained before in this video, I'm only showing you the netting. But if you want to make a necklace out of it, your strands will be longer than mine. You can untie the loose knots at both ends. You want to make sure that you have two groups again and you can start braiding or making a flat knot at, at each side. And then at the end, you will make a sliding knot so you can open and close the necklace. Just keep in mind that you leave about two centimeters above the sliding knot. So you can start braiding about two centimeters above the sliding knot. And this will ensure that the thread can still go through the sliding knot. So you can still open and close the back. But this will be explained uh, at our website. And then lastly, it's time to create a half net. For this design as well, you will need four strands of the same length. And in this part of the video, I'm also only going to show you how to create a net. If you want to make a necklace, I would recommend you to cut about four pieces of two meters long. So you're going to take your first thread and you're going to lay it on the table. And it works the easiest if it's flat against the table, because as you can see, I have a beautiful curl right here. So I'm just going to use the glue and the Eston thread just to make sure that it's against the table and it lays nice and flat. Then I'm going to take my second thread and this one we're going to fold in half and I'm going to make sure that the ends are at the same height. And then when you pull to the other side, you will see that you made a loop. And this loop I'm going to put in the middle of my thread. And for me, that is around here. I'm going to put the loop underneath the first thread and then I'm going to put my fingers through and then I'm going to pull the ends of this thread through the loop. So I'm going to pull tight and I'm holding the first thread flat. Now I'm gonna get the stone and I'm gonna make sure that the first thread is still open, as you can see here, because now I'm gonna knot the first thread around the stone. Then I'm gonna look where I wanna make the knot and it will be right here, right underneath the part that sticks out. So as you can see, this is the first thread that is still open. And I wanna make sure that the knot that we just made 
is right across from the knot that we're about to make. So I'm holding my thumb right where I want to make the knot because now it's important that it's very tight around the stone. And I'm just going to make a normal knot and I'm actually going to pull the knot to where I want it to be. So I'm going to hold the thread with my other hand around the stone and I'm going to move the knot to where I want it to be. And once you have the knot, it's important to pull each strand. And if I'm correctly, then your stone must be secure already. And for me, this will be the top part and this will be the bottom part. And we're going to knot the net around the top part. And now it's time to secure the other two strands as well through this loop. And because my stone is a bit bigger at the top and a bit smaller at the bottom, I can slide this loop off the stone just to make the knotting a bit easier. And as you can see, we made a, a loop. Now you're going to grab your third thread and you're going to do the same as we did with the second thread. So you're going to make a loop like this. We're going underneath the loop, then you put your fingers through the loop and you're going to pull the threads through the loop. Then I'm holding the two other threads down and I'm pulling the threads tight. So for the fourth and final thread, you're going to do exactly the same, but this time you're going to knot it at the top part. And if I'm correct, it still fits around your stone. And as you can see, it will look something like this and the top part will be knotted around the stone. And as you can see, this will be the part where the net will be created. The technique is the same as we did with the first net. And you're going to take one strand from the left side and one strand from the right side, just as we did with the first net. And you're going to create a knot right where you want it to be. Um, but this time it's easier to knot the net around the stone. If you don't like knotting around the stone, you can always slide the thread off the stone and then create the knot where you want it to be. For me, I'm going to knot around the stone and I'm going to make a loop and then a normal knot. And as you can see, I created the first triangle and you're going to continue doing this until you're at the top part of the stone. And then I'll show you how to tie off this work. Once you're done knotting all the parts of the net, this is going to be the easiest part because we're going to make a normal knot with all the threads that are left. We're going to make a loop and then the knot. Just make sure that the knot will be at the top part of the stone, so as close to the stone as possible. And once you're happy with the placement, you're going to pull each strand just to make it extra secure. So to make it extra secure, because I still feel that the net is a bit loose around the stone, I'm going to use some jewelry glue. And this is also a tactic you can use if your stone is really slippery. The chance is that your knots will slide off the stone. And then this will be a tactic that you can use. So use a little bit of glue underneath each knot. So what I'm going to do is I slide the knots upwards. And then I'm going to add a, just the tiniest amount of glue. And I'm going to put them underneath the knots or where the knots will be. And once you're done, you can slide the knots back into the glue and in place. Make sure that the glue is fully dried before you continue creating the necklace. Um, just make sure that the stone is really secure. Then you can make two groups of four strands and you can start braiding or making a flat knot. Um, for this design, you can start right above the knot because we don't have to open or close it. Um, but this will be explained at our website as well. And that's how you create a net around the stone or half a net around the stone. And at our website, we have a lot more stones available for you in different shapes and different colors. And the S lawn is available in different colors as well. So you can create your own fun color combination. I hope you like this tutorial and that you're going to create a necklace yourself. If you did, feel free to share your creation on Instagram using our hashtag Beats and Basics. All the materials can be bought on our website www.pizzabasics.com and if you would like to see more of these video tutorials, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!